It's time to learn about the belt and disc sander. This is the belt and disc sander, otherwise known as the combination sander, because it has a belt and a disc, both for sanding. Okay. Quite often after we use the bandsaw, we'll have a piece of wood that has some extra material that needs to be taken off. This is a good tool for that if it's a small edge. The belt sander is especially useful if you want even flat sanding. So when we did our straight cut on the bandsaw, this edge is a little bit uneven. The disc sander works really well for shaping and curves. What makes this especially useful is that on the outside, it's turning faster, it'll make big cuts. On the inside of the wheel, it's turning slower, and it'll smooth out the cut. So as you sand, you start from the outside edge, and then work towards the inside edge for your last little cuts. You can see that the rotation of this is counterclockwise. So it's turning this direction, pushing down on the left side of the table. We want to make sure that our work is on the left side of the table. It's going to sand the fastest out here, the slowest right here. If I try to sand on the right side of the table, it's going to fling my work up into the air and out across the shop. You also need to pay attention to the gap between the table and the sanding surface. This should be an eighth of an inch or less. If it's too wide, too far away, your work will tend to get caught under there and it will want to flip up. When using this machine, your fingers should be an inch away from the sanding surface. This won't tear your fingers off, but it will leave a very nasty abrasion and they hurt. Trust me, I know. Okay, same thing over here. Your, inches, your fingers are an inch away. And this table, it's starting to wear out. This one actually needs some maintenance. You can see where it's starting to get too big of a gap here. It's almost to the point where we need to replace this table. Okay. The other thing to know about the belt sander is sometimes this belt will wander from side to side. There's a tracking adjustment here and here, just like the bandsaw that will track the belt from one side to the other. These are not to be touched. If you turn the machine on and you notice that the belt is not centered in the spot here, turn the machine off and come get the teacher. The other thing with this machine is that you do need to have dust collection running. Make sure that the hose is connected and make sure that the blast gate is open. Okay, that's closed, that's open, and it helps to turn the thumb screw so it doesn't accidentally close. First, turn on the dust collector. To operate the machine, turn the power switch on, the top button is on, the bottom button is off. Be sure to wait for the machine to stop. When sanding, you notice I used a gentle, even motion. Do not force the wood into the sanding material. You'll burn the wood and you'll tear the belt. Okay. Now while I'm using this, nobody else is using the disc sander. This is a one person tool. One more time, this is a one person tool. So now I'm going to come over here. I have my straight edge that I sanded from the bandsaw. Now I want to sand the curve. And again, I'm going to start at the outside and rotate my wood. And I'll do a second pass in the middle and a third pass on the inside to just get it down to that line. Turn the machine on. Turn the machine off and wait for it to come to a complete stop. And that is your belt and disc sander or combination sander. When you're done, turn off the dust collector.